And the coming together of the three co-equal branches of government, there's a veneer of normalcy to it all. And the president went in there as presidents do and addresses the nation. But left unsaid was that this president comes in, the most unpopular president this early in his tenure in the history of polling, somebody that, who has spent the last year leading a faction in this country, dividing the country, uh, somebody who is besieged by criminal investigation, uh, talking about the importance of our law enforcement organizations and institutions, while at the same time the Republican majority working with the White House is engaged in a full-on assault trying to discredit the FBI, the Justice Department, doing everything they conceivably can to insulate the president from these investigations. We heard talk about expanding our nuclear weapons arsenal. There is not one serious student of American defense policy that thinks that this should be the chief goal of strengthening America's military. Uh, across the depth and breadth of this, you saw a divisive speech, the wedge issue of immigration, the scare tactics of MS-13. Um, there was no talk in the speech about the challenges the country faces over the next five years, 10 years, 15 years. Where are we going as a country? So this divisive president came in tonight at probably the most divided this country has been in the last 50 years since that year of 1968. Uh, he did nothing to appeal to the better angels of our nature as a country in this speech. And more than anything, it was a speech delivered almost from an alternate reality, a fifth dimension uh, that presumes that nothing we heard from this president over the last year, nothing that we've seen actually in fact happened. And of course it did. And the American people know it. And so I think that this is a speech that will not be long remembered. Uh, his words will float up like smoke from a fire and dissipate. In 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours from now, we'll see the typical recklessness, the looseness, the tweet out of left field that will extinguish this moment of supposed normalcy from our minds, I suspect, pretty quickly. Steve Schmidt, I wanted to ask you about some of the first half of the speech, which was almost entirely about the economy um, and jobs. The president talked up the number of jobs that have been created um, during his 14 months in office. Um, and it's true, you know, more than two million jobs have been created. Uh, it's, a, it's the slowest pace of, of job growth in the last seven years. Uh, he talked about economic growth as if it is uh, turbocharged as if we were having a great new repeat period of renewal in terms of economic growth. Economic growth this past year was 2.3 percent, which is a little bit lower than what most economists expected it to be. It's certainly lower than the uh, three, four, even more that uh, that he promised as a candidate and even as president. Is is there a risk for um, the Republicans broadly, not just the president, trying to sell the country on an economic miracle when we're kind of just plodding along economically the same way we have been for the past few years and nothing much has changed. Look, it's all hype, just like it would be out of the condo brochure from the Trump organization trying to sell a couple of units. The reality <laughs> is, is that 44 percent of the United States population does not have $400 cash available to deal with an emergency. 67 percent of the country doesn't have $1,000 in saving. So the Dow Jones average can be 47,000, and it just doesn't touch huge portions of the country. We still haven't seen any evidence that wages are rising in the middle class, in the middle income workers of the country. And that has been the fundamental problem economically that the country's been dealing with for a generation, is the lack of real wage growth for working people. And that lack of real wage growth in the middle of the economy is fueling a tremendous amount of political instability in our system at this point, as we see a system where all the gains are accruing towards the top. Every time I listen to Steve Schmidt talk, I make a mental note, learn more words. Steve, how, 
literally has all the best words. Uh, he has all the best words. Some people say they do. Steve Schmidt, thank you. Thank you for your poetry on the move. Yes, you can ask a political question. Steve, in our old job, you and I would have been watching the Democratic response to understand the competition, if we were in the White House or if we were still in Republican politics. I counted in Joe Kennedy's response 15 we's, 7 u's, and 0 i's. And you and me and our old colleague, Matthew Dowd, and the old chairman of the um, Bush campaign, Ken Melman, would have seen a politician who speaks in the language of we, you, and no eyes as a real formidable voice. What did you make of the Democratic response? It's the most effective response we've seen from a member of any party for quite a long time. He's a rising star in the Democratic Party. He's going to have a big future. And I think about the congressman in close adjacency to him there in Massachusetts, the Combat Marine Corps veteran Seth Moulton. And Congressman Kennedy, Congressman Moulton, uh, uh, a couple of others, uh, I think represent a real changing of the guard mm -hmm. inside the Democratic Party. And we'll be seeing a lot more of these younger members who are in their late 30s, early 40s over this next two-year period. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.